So, uh, a grammar of dialogue. I, as you can imagine, uh, uh, got this uh, expression from uh, Pope Francis. Um, uh, we have, um, in the booklet, we have uh, um, a quotation from uh, a, a talk of his. And um, among the tasks of, in this conference, uh, I think uh, there are this, uh, these two, or this one, actually, this just an, uh, only one. Investigate the possibility that the global community can effectively achieve common goals and obligations that have been solemnly declared and assumed. This is a quotation from the booklet. And uh, in other words, lay the foundation of a theoretical framework for a common home with a common prosperity. And uh, what I'm going to do briefly, I hope, uh, uh, is just try to lay those theoretical foundations. And uh, uh, this can be done in terms of a grammar of dialogue as uh, something designed to, quote, build bridges and find answers to the challenges of our time. This is, uh, as I said, Pope Francis. So, um, uh, I, uh, what I want to propose uh, in this uh, uh, in brief uh, speech is to interpret uh, the idea of a grammar of dialogue as pointing to the idea of a single humanity, where for a single humanity we can understand something transcending race, gender, ethnicity, nationality, religion, and so on and so forth. But um, does the idea of a single humanity really make sense? I think this is uh, something we have to um, ask ourselves first and foremost. Sure is the, is the answer, provided it is correctly understood. And um, my proposal is to understand the idea of a single humanity, with which given content to uh, the uh, common dialogue, um, as universal ethic, a universal ethic, but not uh, uh, mm, ethic in the sense not of a, uh, say, a uh, group of set of uh, uh, ethical principles uh, that uh, should be valid uh, uh, in an intercultural level, but, uh, and something to be imposed from the above, so to say, but something the, the other way around, uh, in a sense, namely um, um, uh, starting from existential problem, ethic uh, uh, as a way to solve existential problems, existential problems on an individual daily life, but also existential problems on a collective life, on a cultural uh, uh, level. Um, mm, mm, every culture, or most of the culture, if not all, for example, have problems uh, are with uh, uh, gender imbalance, uh, just to say an example. Uh, uh, most of the cultures, if not all, have uh, pr are uh, male chauvinism, problem with male chauvinism. Um, uh, most of the cultures, uh, if not all, have problem with homosexuality and so on and so forth. So the idea of universal ethic, as I propose to understand it, is uh, try to find the way to solve on an intercultural basis this kind of uh, problem. Um, in this uh, direction, uh, having this goal, um, there's uh, a, prob a problem to avoid. Namely, avoid a powerful trend in our culture, a trend uh, which is in force at least since the Enlightenment. Uh, the idea uh, to, to understand universal ethic as equal to a universal way of life, to a unique way of life, common and good for every culture. This, uh, there are a couple of quotations here which can give you the sense of this. Um, of this uh, 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 idea of a universal way of life. I'm just uh, going to read Isaiah Berlin. Voltaire's conception of the Enlightenment as being identical in essentials wherever it is attained 
seems to lead to the inescapable conclusion that in his view, Byron would have been happy at table with Confucius and Sophocles would have felt completely at ease in Quattrocento Florence and Seneca in the Salon of Madame du Dauphin or at the court of Frederick the Great. Uh, a possible cause of uh, this trend is, is, and with this we come to the Enlightenment, of course, the idea of a universal reason with a capital R. So the idea that uh, human reason have uh, very uh, um, uh, strong powers uh, to understand, know, uh, understand reality and to know the world so that we can uh, uh, step by step arrive at, at a sort of unique ideal society or in other words, a unique ideal way of lives. And this trend could be, uh, uh, could have been reinforced by the utopian literature, perhaps starting with uh, Plato Republic, but then there are, of course, um, very important, I mean, very important uh, writers, but that could have uh, deep down uh, this, this idea, the idea of leading to a universal way of life. Uh, uh, Thomas More Utopia, Francis Bacon, New Atlantis, Tommaso Campanella, The City of the Sun, these just, uh, are just examples of this kind of trend. And another cause uh, of this idea could be the success of the natural sciences, just because this success made was very impressive so to the, uh, say, lay persons, uh, and one very easily could have could, um, developed the idea that the natural sciences, the su success of the natural science uh, uh, and not in the human sciences uh, could lead step by step to a final point, uh, or uh, even if there's no final point, at least to a unique uh, view of the world. Um, and this has uh, just uh, gave way to uh, a distorted uh, uh, picture of the uh, uh, relation between the natural sciences and the human sciences. It is not a dichotomy, actually, but it, the, the idea of the dichotomy, dichotomy was uh, mm, very... Mm. Uh, okay, but why it is important to avoid it? Be not, not not only because to get, in order to gain a more refined notion of the difference between natural, the natural and human sciences, but also to avoid the risk to jump out of the frying pan into the fire, where the fire here is cultural, cultural relativism. And uh, the ideas of cultural relativism will destroy the very project this conference is about. Why this risk? But you may arrive at cultural relativism by a simple application of the so-called modus tollens inference rule, uh, an inference rule of classical logic, the modus tollendo tollens. Uh, if A, then B, but not B, then not A. Just take, uh, say, universal ethic, uh, and of course, uh, also single humanity, uh, and for B, universal way of life. And you... Uh, 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 obtain that uh, there's not no uh, universe no universal uh, ethic. So in this case, as you know, that the the uh, usual narration, uh, many different conventional ethical system, no possibility to speaking of truth. Truth has no content because truth is, uh, let me say, the most ob objective concept we we have, and of course, no objectivity. Truth. If there is truth, uh, this truth is something that has um, uh, an application in, uh, on an intercultural level. Uh, however, the good news is that cultural relativism is falsifi falsified by practice. And I have underlined uh, the uh, idea of practice with those two red arrows uh, for a reason that will be clear, I hope, at the end of my presentation. And um, so, uh, again, Berlin, uh, members of one culture can, by the force of imaginative insight, understand what Giambattista Vico called 
entrare the values, the ideals, the forms of life of another culture or society, and even those remote in time or space, etc. So this entrare is the basis for a critical attitude towards the other's uh, beliefs. So the moral so far is the one you can read in this um, uh, slide. I will uh, not read it entirely for uh, lack of time. But uh, I would just like to stress uh, the idea of uh, uh, the importance of criticizing and uh, self-criticize, um, which is something important also in light of our SDG uh, number four. Um, so we can speak our truth, uh, this is the, the consequence, and on, on this basis, uh, there's another quotation from Hilary Putnam, um, um, we can talk about the universe and head you. There's a space we can give content to it on, on this, uh, 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 yeah. thanks to this uh, uh, theoretical framework, a single humanity, then uh, a grammar of dialogue. But uh, one last remark. Um, uh, this, this is the important practice I uh, reminded uh, just a minute uh, ago. Um, I briefly explored the possibility of a theoretical framework for a common home with a common prosperity, but a theoretical framework, however important, is not enough. The kind of problems that we are tackling here cannot be solved only in the study. They should be solved in practice, that is, in life. Also Durkheim had something, this uh, opposition, in the study, in real life, in daily life. Uh, and this uh, uh, highlights the importance of our SDG 4, quality of education, that I want to understand as one would like to underline the last part of the explication of SDG 4, namely promote lifelong learning, uh, understanding it as education of adults. Why? Not only to improve one's job prospect, not only to pursue personal and professional development, but above all, to develop one's critical thinking and skill. You see, necessary step in order to become responsible person and have something like, arrive at something like grammar of dialogue. Thank you.